Hey guys, this is Mr. Shell, and this is a lesson on graphing. So if you notice here, we have some grid lines for a graph, and over here we have, this is going to be our data table. So in order to make our graph from the data table, first, let's uh, label our axes. So we know here, down here, the bottom axis is called is the x-axis, and the vertical axis is always the y-axis. On the x-axis, we always have our independent variable. So in our example, it's going to be time. Time is almost always an independent variable. So that time almost always will go on the x-axis if you have time. So let me get my pen out here. And so we have time, and I didn't put that here. We could say this is, to, and we'll say this is in hours. So we need to label it first, right? So we have oops, time. And we'll say it's in hours. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So our y-axis is going to be the temperature. And so going up our y-axis, notice we have to get to 75 as our maximum. So we have to choose uh, the scale or how much we go up on each line. And let's just say we'll go up 10. That's pretty good, I think. We'll fit them all in there. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. These did not show up for some reason. There's 50, and there's 60. And then let's title our graph. We can say this is, uh, let's say we're looking at how temperature increases as, the, as at sunrise. So as time is increasing, the temperature is also increasing as the sun is coming up. So we can say, let's call it, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type this one. I think that'll be a little bit neater here. So we can call it increase in temperature during morning sunrise. Okay, so we've got our graph all set up now. Now we need to plot the data on our graph. So we just look at each point. So we have at time one, the temperature is 55 degrees. And then, oh, I didn't label my y-axis over here. This, this should be labeled as temperature. And then it would be in degrees Celsius, or Fahrenheit, this is degrees Fahrenheit. So let's look at here, time one, temperature 55. So I go down to time one. Time one, temperature's up here, we'll go up to 55, and we'll make ourselves a data point there. Now we have time two, temperature's 57, so it didn't go up very much, so we'll make it a little bit higher here, right around 57. Time three, we have 58, that's uh, still going up not very much, that's almost the same, 58 right there. Time four, we have 63, so four, we're getting a little bit warmer now, 63. Time 5 is 70, and time 6 would be 75. Okay, so there's our data points. Now the next thing that you guys learned how to do as you were going through your lesson was how to make a trend line. And a trend line is not just connecting the data points. That is not a trend line. A trend line is something that is kind of like the average of all the data points. And you can do either curved lines or straight lines, depending on what fits your data the best. This one, it looks like it's pretty much straight. It's pretty close to being straight, so we use a straight line. 
And so if you were drawing this on a paper, you could take a ruler or some straight edge and you'd kind of draw something that goes kind of right through the middle, like what's the trend of the data. And so we'll st you make sure you extend it all the way to the y-axis and maybe we'll go extend this. It's looking pretty good and we'll go there we go. So notice that's not through any particular dot, it's just kind of the average of what those dots are doing and then make sure you extend it all the way back to the y-axis here. So now that we have this trend line, we can use this trend line to predict what temperatures might be in the future. So for example, if this was going to be a set, if I had a, like hour 7, I don't have data for hour 7, oops that's a line. So if we want to know what the temperature might be at hour 7, if we want to predict that, we can go up here, look at our trend line, and we can say, oh, look, it's going to be, eh, maybe it's a little, should be a little bit higher, maybe it'll be about 75 or 76. And then if I wanted to, if I, okay, hour 8, now it looks like we're going to be up at about 80 right here, right? So we can use that trend line to predict what we might see in the future and also what it might have been in the past if we want to look backwards. So the other important thing, once you get the trend line, is being able to get the equation for that line, or at least find the slope of this line. Now if you remember, the equation for a slope of a line is y equals mx plus b. It's the equation for a line, and m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. And so we want to find this slope. This is an important thing to be able to find, is the slope for a line. And if you remember the slope for a line is the rise over the run, basically how much it goes up divided by how much it goes over. And so to do that, we can just look at a couple of points on our graph and calculate the slope. So let's see, if we want to calculate the slope of our line, let's look at Maybe we'll look at uh, the line and try to find some easy points here. Maybe this one right here, we'll look at this point, and you can pick any two points you want if it's a line. So this point, because it's right on 80, right? So 80. And then maybe we'll go to, uh, we could say, let's go to maybe this point on the line right here that looks like it's we can say that's about 69 and of course you're not going to know exactly but we can say that's about 69 so now the rise how much it goes up we just subtract the bigger number from the smaller number so our rise would be 80 minus 69 and then we said rise over run is the slope actually so this would not be it's not actually the rise this would be our slope I apologize for the sloppy handwriting. I have this uh, new tablet and pen and I'm still getting used to, to writing with it. So we have our rise, 80 over 69. And now we just need to look at the run, so how far it goes over. And we can see we have 8, hour 8 to hour 5. So we'll do 8 minus 5. equals, and if we calculate that out, we can see that we'll get 11 here over 3, and then that equals if we round it 367. Didn't want 
3.67, there we go. So that would be our slope. That would be our slope. That's how you calculate the slope of the line. And then you could put that into the equation if you wanted, and then you could find the y-intercept. And we can just see it right there. It's at 50, and then we'd have our equation for the line. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Good luck with graphing.